Hey everyone, this lesson is on pheochromocytoma. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what you need to know for this condition, including the classic triad of symptoms. And we're also going to talk about the careful treatment and management of patients with this condition. So let's get started. Pheochromocytoma is a condition due to a catecholamine secreting tumor, which is formed by chromaffin cells within the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal glands are the glands that sit atop of the kidneys and if we kind of were to take one of these adrenal glands off of a kidney and, and kind of transect it, there is a cortex to the adrenal gland, which is the outer portion of it, and there's also the inner portion, which is called the medulla. So the field chromocytoma is a tumor of chromaffin cells inside the medulla. This is often a single tumor, and these tumors also have a malignant potential. So about 10% of field chromocytomas are found to be malignant. They also have a similar presentation to paragangliomas, which originate from sympathetic nervous tissue as opposed to field chromocytomas, which originate from chromaffin cells. But the management and treatment are similar for both conditions. The etiology of field chromocytoma is often idiopathic, so it's idiopathic in most cases. But there can be some genetic component to developing a pheochromocytoma. So any family history of individuals with pheochromocytoma would be important to know. Some of these genetic conditions include MEN2A and MEN2B, so those multiple endocrine neoplasia type uh, syndromes, and also von Hippel-Lindau. So what is the pathophysiology of pheochromocytoma? So if we were to take a look at that, transected adrenal gland again. We have the cortex on the outside, medulla on the inside, and in field chromocytoma we've got a big tumor in the medulla, and that tumor is composed of chromaffin cells. Now chromaffin cells in and of themselves are important in the medulla of a normal adrenal gland because they produce some of the catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine, but if we have a big tumor in there that is basically hypersecreting norepinephrine and epinephrine and smaller amounts of dopamine. And these catecholamines can then act on adrenergic receptors like alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2 receptors, etc. So with regards to alpha-1 receptor activation, alpha-1 receptors are located throughout the body in widespread areas. But what I want you to remember is alpha-1 receptor activation leads to vasoconstriction. So peripheral vascular system has a lot of alpha-1 receptors. Activation of these receptors leads to vasoconstriction and smooth muscle contraction. So when we have vasoconstriction, we get an increase in blood pressure. With regards to beta-1 receptor activation, beta-1 receptors are located within the heart. These lead to increased cardiac output, increased heart rate, and stroke volume. So we can get tachycardia. And beta-2 receptor activation is involved in smooth muscle relaxation in the respiratory system. And this is by no means a complete list of adrenergic receptors and their downstream effects, but I'll talk about more of these in a future lesson. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of pheochromocytoma? What I want you to remember is the classic triad of pheochromocytoma. The classic triad involves, one, a episodic pounding headache, two, palpitations and tachycardia, and three, diaphoresis. So those are the classic triad of pheochromocytoma, episodic pounding headache, palpitations, and tachycardia, and diaphoresis. Some less common symptoms of pheochromocytoma include orthostatic hypotension, weight loss, polyuria and polydipsia, constipation, hyperglycemia and insulin resistance, papilledema, paroxysmal hypertension, cardiomyopathy that is similar to a tachycardia due to increased exposure to catecholamines. And what is important to recognize in patients with pheochromocytoma is that they can have triggers for some of their symptoms. Some of these triggers can include stress, exertion, anesthesia, abdominal pressure, and particular tyramine containing foods like cheese, wine, etc. So how do we investigate whether a patient has pheochromocytoma or not? If they have some of those classic triad of symptoms or there's other indexes of suspicion for pheochromocytoma, perhaps they have a refractory hypertension, 
we can then begin to investigate whether a patient has pheochromocytoma or not. But what we first want to do is we want to discontinue any interfering medications, and some of those interfering medications include tricyclic antidepressants. So before we go into investigating whether a patient has pheochromocytoma or not, we want to stop some interfering medications, in particular tricyclic antidepressants. So what are some of those investigations? Some of the investigations include a 24-hour urine fractionated metanephrine and catecholamines, so we can do uh, look at 24-hour um, levels of metanephrines and catecholamines. Metanephrines are breakdown products of catecholamines. Or we can check a plasma fractionated metanephrines, taking a sample from an indwelling cannula. And this is important because we don't want to take a sample from someone we just poked because they may have a surge in catecholamine levels. And we want to take the sample after about 30 minutes of supine rest. Once we get our results back, if the results are normal, if there are normal levels of metanephrines and catecholamines, we can recheck again during a spell when the patients are having active symptoms. But if the levels are still normal, likely another diagnosis, we want to think about something else. But if we get our results back and it shows metanephrines and catecholamines greater than or equal to about two times the upper limit of normal levels, then the next step is to localize the tumor using adrenal or abdo MRI or CT scan. If the tumor is greater than 10 centimeters, we want to use IO Benguane I-123 scan. And if we don't see a tumor on imaging, we can still consider doing an I-123 scan or a whole body MRI. We also want to discuss genetic testing. So because it's associated with men two syndromes and von Hippel-Lindau, we can look for that uh, ret proto oncogene in the men two syndromes, and we could also look for a VHL uh, mutation. And we also wanted to kind of dis discern if it's a malignant tumor or not. Once we've localized the pheochromocytoma, treatment involves surgical resection, and this is often curative. But before surgery, we have to do a couple of things. The first thing is we have to do preoperative alpha adrenergic blockade. Then we want to do beta adrenergic blockade in that order. So alpha adrenergic blockade first, then beta adrenergic blockade. Never beta adrenergic blockade first. Alpha adrenergic blockade involves about 10 to 14 days of therapy before surgery. We typically use phenoxybenzamine. And once we do phenoxybenzamine, we often do daily blood pressure monitoring. And by about the second to third day of alpha blockade, we want to get the patient to have a high sodium diet, generally greater than five grams of sodium per day, because the alpha blockade can lead to vasodilation and can often um, cause some drop in um, volume status. If it's required, we can move on to a long-term alpha adrenergic blockade if it's longer than 10 to 14 days. And we generally would use a more selective alpha, uh, alpha blocker like prazosin, terazosin, or doxazosin. And for perioperative management, we could use IV phentolamine. Once we achieve effective alpha adrenergic blockade, we can move on to beta adrenergic blockade. We use propanolol during the first day, then we often switch to a long-acting uh, beta blocker. And for cases where the typical management doesn't work, we can use a catecholamine synthesis inhibitor like metyrosine. And again, this is only when other therapies are ineffective. I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson on pheochromocytoma. If you did find this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And also, don't forget to check out some of my other endocrinology content. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you next time.